Good day. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and this topic we're going to look at switching between the rectangular and polar representations of complex numbers. So in this topic, we're simply going to look at how to convert between these two representations. We will go from one to the other and then vice versa. We will also learn about the complex exponential. All right. So given the complex number z is equal to alpha plus beta j, this is going to be in the rectangular representation. So alpha is the real part or real component and beta is the imaginary component. Well, in order to convert this into the polar representation, we must do the following. First, we must calculate r, the length or the absolute value of z. Well, this can be done by simply calculating the square root of alpha squared plus beta squared. Straightforward enough. That gives us r. Next, we have to calculate the argument of z to get the value theta. Now, we've already seen how to do this. However, in this course, you will only ever be asked to calculate the argument when it is obvious. Say, for example, pi over 4, or 45 degrees, or multiples thereof. So, for example, the argument of 1 plus j is 45 degrees, or pi by 4. The argument of, say, negative 1 minus j would be well, it's 180 plus 45, so that's 225 degrees. Or, alternatively, you can think of it as negative 180 plus 45, which would be negative 135. Either way, these are reasonably straightforward to calculate. Otherwise, if you were using a programming language to calculate this, you would use the two-argument arctangent function. So in Python, you would use numpy.arctan2 with beta and alpha as your arguments. Remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent, and so in this case, the opposite is the beta. In C++, you would use the standard library function atan, again, with beta and alpha as your arguments. Now, given the polar representation, so if I give you both r and theta, so that z is equal to r phase theta, of, say, 3 phase 45 degrees, or 3 phase 190 degrees, well, in that case, to calculate the rectangular representation is even easier. So if z is equal to r phase theta, where r is the absolute value of z and theta is the angle between the line connecting z and the origin and the positive real axis, well then what we have to do is we have to figure out what is the projection of z onto the real axis. But wait a second. From trigonometry, you know that that's just r cosine theta. The projection onto the imaginary axis is just sine theta, so the imaginary com uh, component times j will be just r sine theta times j. Oh, that's quite straight. So, for example, if I give you that z is 5 phase 60 degrees, to convert this into rectangular representation, we just calculate 5 cosine of 60 degrees plus 5 times sine of 60 degrees times j. Well, cos of 60 degrees is 1 half, sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2, so we substitute those into that expression. And then if we were to convert those into real approximations, we'd see that that's approximately equal to 2.5 plus 4.33j. And you can see, yes, that should be approximately length 5 
or magnitude 5 and you can see that the angle is greater than 45 degrees and yes it's quite reasonable that that should be close to 60 degrees. Now one observation. In your calculus course you will learn through the use of Taylor series that e to the j theta can actually be calculated and it's actually very easy. It's cosine theta plus sine theta times j. Thus it follows that if I multiply that by a real number r then I'm just multiplying r times e to the j theta which is r multiplied by the quantity cos theta plus j times sine of theta. Well because r is real I can just distribute that through and we get that it is equal to r cos theta plus r sine theta j. Oh but wait a second that is what we just previously defined on the previous slide as as r phase theta. Therefore the following two are completely equivalent r to the e j theta and r phase theta. Both of those thetas are the same. Now in this course we will use r phase theta but as an engineer you should be aware of the exponential representation which you will be using in your course on quantum mechanics and in other courses as well. Consequently in this topic you now know how to convert between the rectangular and polar representations and you are at least peripherally aware of the exponential representation of e to the j theta and in your calculus course you will learn why this is true. Here are the references, acknowledgements, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!